Everything's new today, a new haircut and a new version of Next.js. Let's get into it. Today we'll look at how Next.js fixed their caching issues. It's the beginning of summer in the Northern Hemisphere and I've got my new summer haircut. But if you like the long hair, don't worry, it always grows back. But let's talk about what's really important and that's how Next.js just released Next.js 15 RC, which means release candidate, basically a preview before the actual stable release is ready. And in this release, they've listened to developer feedback and fixed their caching issues. Let's take a look. I'm on the Next.js blog, and you can see this is Next.js 15 RC. It was just released yesterday as they're having a Vercel event right now, so they announced this. And I'll scroll up here. There's several good things in this release candidate. Of course, the React compiler, lots of people are talking about that, something very new that I'll be talking about on my channel in the future. They've also got some hydration error improvements that are very welcome, lots of good things here. But I think there's one thing in particular that's going to make an immediate huge impact for the developer experience, and that is the caching updates here. So let's go ahead and click on that and look at each part of what they've changed here. They have listened to developer feedback. Right now, there are some things that we could maybe opt out of, but that were set by default. And there was one thing in particular that we couldn't even opt out of before. So let's take a look at all of that. We'll scroll down. And the first one are fetch requests. Now we could opt out of this before by setting no store, which I typically did. Usually when I fetch data, and most developers fetch data, they want to get the latest data instead of caching it. It makes more sense to opt into the cache, and that's what they have now done. So instead of having to put in no store to not cache the fetch data, instead, now you're automatically opted out, and if you want to cache it, you have to provide force cache. So a very welcome change for fetch requests. The next change is to the route handlers. And of course, we're talking about the Git requests to route handlers. And the big change there is that they were also cached by default. And that's kind of something that was difficult to process at first because typically when we want to request data from an API route handler, we want the latest data. And so we had to get used to that being cached and put in a route config, we would always put in export const dynamic equals force dynamic to get out of that caching behavior. And I was putting that, of course, in just about every route I created because I didn't want those cached. And I think most people were doing the same thing. But now we don't have to do that. They will not be cached by default. And instead, if we want to cache those, it says put in export dynamic equals force static. Now I would have to look at the docs to see if they left a const out of here or not. But typically I would have had export const dynamic and I was setting that to force dynamic previously. Now we'd have to put in force static if we do want the git route handler to cache what it is providing. Now both of these changes I've talked about, fetch and route handlers, we were able to opt out of with these settings. But the big one, the one that's going to have the most impact I think is the client router cache because previously we couldn't opt out of it. Well, I say that, but in 14.2, if we go back to their release, they did put in some caching improvements and there was an experimental setting for stale times where we could go into our config. You could essentially take this dynamic value, which was a link in Next.js that is set to prefetch faults or you wouldn't put in the prefetch attribute at all. And it was by default cached at 30 seconds and you could set this dynamic to zero. But this was just introduced last month in Next.js 14.2. So if you're using 14.2 right now, you could put this in your next config, set this to zero and get this same no caching behavior for those links. Now, by the way, static, this is for links that have that prefetch attribute set to true. And if we quickly look at the docs here, you can see here's a prefetch attribute set to false in a link that we use in Next.js. That's what I'm talking about. So let's go back to our 15 blog here. And now they're saying that they are not going to cache. The default setting is to not cache those dynamic links. So if we don't provide the prefetch attribute or if we set it to false, 
it will not be cached. And we actually have to opt into the dynamic cache here. So what you see in the next config now is if you want to opt in with Next.js 15, you would set dynamic to 30 seconds. And that's huge. And I think it's huge because before we just simply couldn't opt out. And that created a lot of confusion. We would opt out of everything else. We would set our page routes to uh, export const equals force dynamic and we wouldn't be caching anything there. And we would set our fetch request to no store. And we were doing everything we could to not cache something, but we would change some data on a page. And then we would say, go back to the previous page. And then we'd say, hey, well, I wanna change one more thing. And we would click a link and it would be less than 30 seconds. So when we revisited, even though we'd updated the data, we would still see that cache data. And that became very frustrating and confusing, especially if you didn't know how those worked in Next.js. Well, now I think they've eliminated the problem and made those opt in. If we wanna cache, we have to now set this in stale times, and that's going to make it a lot more intuitive and in what developers expect. I'm glad to see Next.js is listening to developers and that they've made these changes. What do you think about these changes? Let me know in the comments. Hey guys, giving a quick shout out to my patrons. Holy Coder is a progress provider and Eldad is a member at the senior level. Also, thank you to all of the junior members. You're all helping me reach my goals. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, it's got exclusive content and early release content. And it's not one of those Patreons that doesn't get many posts. I'm active on there every week. So please check it out if you haven't. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.